It's been about a month and it's time again for a new system update. I got the warning on Thursday evening for 16.1.1 and I let it install. However, on Saturday morning I got another update for 16.1.2. So let's see what's new. Alright, this update also includes 16.0.2, 16.0.3, 16.1 and 16.1.1. They're all basically the same. It's always a good idea to do a system reboot after an update. Do this by pressing both of the steering wheel buttons in for several seconds. It will then have a blank screen for a while and then the Tesla logo will show up as it restarts. Here are the release notes for 2022. .16.1.2. Let's go over the list here and also some items that are undocumented. First up is driver profiles. Media player accounts, for example Spotify, are now linked to your driver profile. Simply log into your media account while your driver profile is selected. This is a welcome feature that allows Tesla driver profiles to independently control their streaming accounts as part of this update. Tesla introduced Spotify integration back in 2019, but for owners sharing a Tesla with multiple driver profiles, it required users to log in and out of their respective accounts if they wanted to view their own playlists, song likes, and suggested content. This led many owners to create a separate shared Tesla Spotify account that could be shared for everyone in the vehicle. Thankfully, taking pity on the countless users stuck listening to their significant other's playlists, Tesla has now tied streaming accounts to driver profiles. Users have begun to note that the differentiated account experience works with other streaming services available on Tesla like Tidal. There are no new menus or options to set. When you log in to Spotify or other music service, your car will now simply remember that login should be used for that current driver profile. This does not yet work for video streaming services like YouTube since those are essentially web pages, but we can hope that Tesla can separate more user-specific information like browser data in the future. Energy prediction for your route has been improved by incorporating forecasted crosswind, headwind, humidity, and ambient temperature when using online navigation. So with this latest update, it makes calculating energy consumption on your next trip even more precise. When navigating to your destination, your Tesla will already show you the estimated energy available upon arrival. Before this update, Tesla's routing system estimated energy usage by distance, elevation changes, and some additional information such as your vehicle type and its wheel configuration. The new navigation energy prediction makes this prediction even more definitive by forecasting wind conditions. Assessing if you will be driving into a headwind or crosswind, determining the humidity, and gauging the ambient temperature. Since Tesla is relying on additional weather information for these predictions, your vehicle will need to have an active cellular connection, but premium connectivity is not required. This latest update may not be the most significant factor for short trips, but it could have a meaningful upgrade for those who use their Tesla for long distance traveling when every acceleration or regenerative braking matters. Those concerned about traveling in the winter months now have access to even more detailed information about consumption and can better plan for stops along the way to their destination. Tesla first included environmental factors in a 2018 update and the wind calculations have been showing up in code since March 2022, but now it's available in the production build of this update. Although these changes are completely invisible to the owner, they will help reduce range anxiety on long trips and increase our confidence in the vehicle's predictions. These changes will also improve the accuracy of your suggested wait time at a supercharger before you're able to move on to your next stop or destination. Autopilot's maximum speed has been increased from 80 to 85 miles per hour. 
Note that this is for newer Teslas with vision only. My car has regular autopilot with radar and vision, and thus I can have a higher miles per hour setting. In my case, I can get up to 90 while using autopilot. Of course, please continue to remain attentive and be ready to take over while using autopilot features. Your vehicle can now automatically apply regular brakes for consistent deceleration when regenerative braking is limited due to battery temperature or state of charge. To enable this, tap controls, pedals and steering, and apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. However, I don't have this option in my menu. I checked online and nobody has seen this option in their menu either. So I'm guessing this is either a feature that is not yet activated or has been turned off due to a problem. I'll keep an eye on this and let you know in the future. Another undocumented change in this release is updated visualizations. This includes new, more detailed vehicle models that have doors, windows, glass roofs, and wheels. Although the car models are the same ones used in the full self-drive beta, only the vehicle models are being carried over to the production builds right now. It doesn't appear to be including anything else the betas are currently detecting or displaying, such as road edges, drivable areas, open doors, or blinkers. My car is not the best example for this update since it has the Autopilot Computer version 2.0 and not the 3.0 version that newer cars have or that is required by full self-driving. In any case, here are some of the cars, pickups, vans, semi-trucks, etc. that I saw on my way to work. The line directly above the speedometer reading in a Model 3 and Y shows the amount of regenerative braking in green or acceleration in black that is occurring. The center of the line is neutral where there is no acceleration or regenerative braking occurring. The further the line goes to the left, the greater the amount of regenerative braking is taking place, and the more it goes to the right, the greater the acceleration. With this update, the line is made thicker making it more obvious and easier to see for the driver. Here you can see the new version up top and the original below. Number seven is the powered trunk. This is an undocumented change in this release. If your vehicle is equipped with a powered trunk, this update addresses an issue that could have caused your trunk from closing completely. In some cases, owners have reported that their powered trunk stops before closing all the way. And as you can see, my 2018 doesn't have a powered trunk, just the manual version. Well, not a whole lot of exciting things, but some stand out to me. Of all, the regeneration acceleration line becoming thicker is really good. It was pretty hard to see before this update. Next, higher speeds for autopilot is nice, especially on trips. And talking about trips, the more accurate navigation energy prediction will be very useful too. Having separate logins for the music apps is great if you have multiple drivers on the same car. Just link them to each profile. The visualization is actually a downgrade for my early 2018 with an Autopilot 2.0 computer. I now see a lot fewer items on the screen. I don't see much of the surrounding area. Cones don't show up anymore unless they're errors and I don't see oncoming cars or ones in the opposite lane. I guess this is Tesla's way of telling me to get the new computer upgrade. The regen braking will probably show up for me in a later update, so I can't comment on its effectiveness at this point. And that's all for today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.